Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash just no mill. In today's episode. M.I.L. wore pajamas to brunch at my parents' house then drank half a bottle of whiskey. My boyfriend's mom called me fat. How do I reconcile with M.I.L. for the sake of my relationship? M.I.L. says I'm toxic but they're the ones making life hell. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. M.I.L. wore pajamas to brunch at my parents' house then drank half a bottle of whiskey. She's here visiting us for the weekend. She showed up this morning in pajamas, knowing we were going to my parents' house for brunch. Didn't bring any other clothes. We get to my parents' house and my mom offers her a peach bellini to go with brunch. She goes, what? My mom explains that it's peach juice and champagne. Amiel goes, Jack. My parents are like, sorry. She asks for Jack Daniels. They happen to have some and get her a bottle, which is over half full. Over the course of a single hour she proceeds to drink the entire bottle by herself. She's such an embarrassment. I would just sit back and enjoy the show with this lady. She sounds like a train wreck. I feel like this may be a glimpse into my future lol. Oh yeah. That behavior reflects badly only on her, not her kids or kids-in-law. She's a fully grown woman, even adult kids can't control her choices. She didn't bring other clothes. She arrived at your home in pajamas. She arrived at the airport wearing pajamas. It's day number two since she's been here and I haven't seen her in anything else. Please explain to your husband that she is no longer welcome at your home and why. She is a tragic alcoholic. If she didn't puke her guts out from that I'd say she has a problem. She doesn't even seem drunk. Or even buzzed. Lady has some crazy high tolerance. Is she okay? Like, is this typical behavior? Yeah unfortunately it's not out of character for her. This, this sounds so much like an aunt of mine that has serious issues with alcohol. Except my aunt's body is shutting down now BC of it and so it's not a crazy high tolerance, she's just not functioning anymore. But she showed up after a flight in pajamas, drunk as a skunk, with no clothes or anything packed. My mom was aghast. That's hilarious. I'm sorry you and DH are embarrassed. Neither of you are responsible for the alcoholic, and no one would consider that you were. My boyfriend's mom called me fat. A couple of days ago I met my boyfriend's mother, it was a great experience and she is really nice, I came home happy to have finally met her. However, yesterday when I asked my boyfriend what his mother had said about me when I wasn't present, he told me that she said something like, she is really beautiful and has a couple of extra pounds that suit her wonderfully. I know she didn't mean it with bad intentions, besides she didn't say it in front of me, but anyway, it was a comment that affected me a lot. I'm a girl slightly taller than average, 170 centimeters, 5 feet 7 inches at the moment I weigh 62 kg, 136 pounds, and I've always had curves even at my lowest weight, maintaining measurements of 92 slash 65 slash 98, 36 slash 25 slash 38, aprox, so objectively I'm not even close to be even slightly overweight. I recently started going to therapy and I'm diagnosed with body dysmorphia and ED, I felt like I had made progress in being able to see my body in a more positive light, but that unfortunate comment seems to have shattered all my efforts. Now I feel fat and disgusting again, and all I want to do is restrict and exercise until I disappear. Your boyfriend's mom isn't the problem. She made an offhand comment to her own child that never should have been repeated to you. 
Yeah, YTF would he repeat that? Does your boyfriend ever comment on your appearance slash weight slash eating habits? Does he tell you that you are attractive and he loves your body? It's very odd that he chose to pass along unkind words from his mother. Have you asked him why he told you what she said? Because he's either kinda dumb or possibly something more nefarious. Since he sounds like he's a little bit slow, you might need to sit him down and have a chat about feelings and being kind and respectful. Ask him what he was expecting you to feel like or do with what he told you. You need to advocate for your own mental and emotional health as your boyfriend sounds like an insensitive jerk. Good luck. 5 feet 7 inches 136 pounds. Girl, you're not overweight in the slightest. She sounds like a jealous cow. Did Demiel really say that, or is the boyfriend the one who thinks that is a message that needs to get sent? Either way, I don't like these people. My mum called me fat when I showed her my wedding outfit that I got from a charity shop. She was highly upset she couldn't control me with her £1,000 wedding dress budget. Why would I allow my mother in my wedding dress choice? I'm 46 years old. I'm 52 next birthday. I haven't spoken to her since my wedding day and that's 5 years no contact. Sound good? First off, as others have said, your so is a jerk for repeating that, if that even came from her. Second, I'm as tall as you are, and have more weight on me than you do. I am very happy with my body and I hope you reach the point in your life that you are, too. This body gets me up every day, lets me move around freely, with this body I laugh, I love and I look for happiness in each day. If someone thinks I have a few too many pounds on me, that's on them, not on me. You are not fat. You are a wonderful person who deserves a better boyfriend. Aw oh, I love you internet stranger. You made me feel good, and I'm not OP. Edit to add have my free award. XX. I would not take a he said his mom said to heart. Does your boyfriend make comments about your weight? Appearance? Does he like drama? If anything I would wonder if it's him making up crap to try and get in your head. By the way you are thin at 136. I actually think think that was a compliment but I'm sure anybody with body dysmorphia doesn't need to hear anything that someone comments about their body, cause most people don't know how to give a proper compliment these days, sounds like your BF doesn't know you very well, he should have known better to say anything to you that was said about your body. About it being a compliment, I think his mom was actually trying to talk about your curves, but don't really know how to express it the way she needs. So, I stand by my statement that I think it was meant as a compliment. How do I reconcile with MIL for the sake of my relationship? Sorry this is a long post. I'm struggling to heal from the hurt caused by my MIL and I'd like some advice on how I can move forward. For some context, I have been with my husband for 11 years, married for 4. There were a number of red flags with my MIL that I should have seen from the very beginning but I was young and desperate for a family. My mom died when I was a preteen and my dad wasn't around. I moved in with extended family as a child, and spent some time in a boarding school. I met my husband at university. Two years after graduating we decided to move in together. I had been in employment for two years at that point and my husband was embarking on his PhD. We needed a guarantor for the lease, so naturally he approached his parents. His mom asked if I had family who would give money if it was needed and refused to be to a guarantor. We approached my university professor who was happy to help. Fast forward a couple of years and we got engaged. MIL seemed to be genuinely happy. She offered to take me dress shopping and I said yes. I felt a lot of pressure to pick this particular dress. 
I paid for it. On the way back home, I opened up to my husband and informed him that I preferred something simpler, classic and cheap. I had paid for the dress though, but I wanted to get this cheap one on eBay. My husband was really concerned about telling his mom, so I said I would break the news in person. A few weeks later his parents visited. I broke the news after branch. I was not ready for what came next. She was extremely upset and began verbally attacking me in the middle of the street. She said that it was weird that I didn't have a family, that I needed to figure out what I wanted to do with my life, I had decided that I wanted to pursue a legal career and I had secured a full scholarship, and that I had insulted her job, she has called me when I decided to leave my job and shouted at me for making a mistake, to which I replied saying that I didn't want to wake up in 20 years miserable in said job. I made no comment about her job, I feared her. What cut the deepest was the attack concerning my lack of a family, something I couldn't help. But she could have broken up my relationship with the accusation. I have never forgiven her for this. After the wedding, she kept making hurtful comments. For instance, her brother had unfortunately passed away some weeks before the wedding and she gained guardianship over her niece. When visiting one weekend, she came up close and said, you took my son away from me, but luckily I now have a daughter. I suggested that she could see it as having gained another daughter rather than having lost her son. She looked in the opposite direction and walked away. On another occasion, she visited with her niece during the week. My husband was unable to take time off work, but I was. In the morning I asked if she needed a towel for a shower. She replied with, no, I'm going Blakens today. I was stunned. I am black. All I could say was, wow. She proceeded to say that it is something her late brother used to say, as if that makes it okay. There have been a number of other comments, like my, strange accent, to her dog, which I just ignore. My husband and I have argued so much about his mother. Lockdown created some distance. I became used to it and now my approach is to distance myself. Since then my husband has witnessed the comments twice and he has called her out on them, which I really appreciate. However, I'm struggling to forgive her, but I want to for the sake of my relationship. Any advice is much appreciated. Sorry for any spelling errors, I'm typing this on my phone. Also, please ignore my username on here. I created the account back in 2016 and Reddit doesn't allow one to change the username. There, there is nothing to reconcile. You don't have a relationship with your MIL. That is her choice and there's nothing you can do about it. Your husband needs to understand that as long as you are polite to her when you see her and are not trying to keep him from visiting with her you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. If this is truly becoming a sticking point in your relationship with him then get to a couple's counselor ASAP. That is tough to accept. I may have been holding on to this idealized perfect family that I do desperately want to be part of. I do want and hope for a mutually respectful relationship with her someday, but I don't feel like I can talk to her about how she's made me feel. This has to be a two-way relationship. If Mill isn't interested in being respectful or stop the racist comments then what's the point? I suggest you try couples counseling before setting yourself on fire to keep DH warm. However, I'm struggling to forgive her, but I want to for the sake of my relationship. Don't. She didn't show any respect towards you for over a decade, didn't show an ounce of regret, never apologized to you made amend or else. She just keeps disrespecting you. Why would you forgive her while she has done nothing but showing hate, racism and disrespect? For your husband's sake. Your husband can have a relationship with her but you absolutely have no obligation to have a relationship with someone who is toxic and behave this way. On the contrary, keeping your distance is showing her you don't tolerate her behavior anymore. 
You do brush this off, she will never respect you and will keep disrespecting you, acting worse in every opportunity she'll have. I don't know if you have or want kids but this is an issue you need to sort it out ASAP, you need to set boundaries and consequences and stay away from her. She doesn't want a relationship. She wants a target and a doormat. Don't sacrifice your dignity for peace. You don't have to forgive her. You don't have to forget. She knows what she does, react accordingly. Provide the amount the civility she reciprocates. I, I was a doormat for years. I think me distancing myself has come as a shock. She asks where I am when she FaceTimes as I've been moving to another room each time. I look like the one with a problem to everyone. I feel awful but the more we argued about her, the more I wanted to distance myself from her. Thank you for your advice. DH has been great in challenging and calling out hurtful comments from his mom. He demanded that she give me an apology when she verbally attacked me following the news that I wanted a simpler dress. I didn't get it. I do see that my resentment is having a negative impact on him. I do want him to have a good relationship with his mom. We've discussed creating healthy boundaries and calling out any further comments. I desperately want to forgive her, but it's easier said than done. You should be asking what your husband can do for the sake of the your relationship. He is the biggest problem here. I'm really surprised you ignored all the red flags with MIL and stayed in a relationship with this guy. Usually we forgive people when we know that they changed their mind, apologized and regret their actions. Nothing like this happened here. Okay, you will forgive her and tomorrow she will say something like this again. Sorry, but distance seems like a solution. Forgiveness is for you, not the other person. Doesn't mean that you should forget. It isn't healthy for you or your marriage. Have your husband spend time with her but you need not attend, you will come to resent DH if you do. To be completely honest, I was desperate to be accepted that I was blind to the red flags. My husband is great, and he has repeatedly challenged his mother. He is the only child, so his parents are the closest family he has. He's in a those situation, which is why I want a better relationship with his mother, for his sake. I'm a lot older and a MIL to a dial I love dearly. My own MIL was a vile woman and I wish I'd spoken out earlier. You can't change her, only the way you respond to her. How would you feel about calling her out the next time she stays and is rude? Perhaps suggest that if the whatever isn't to her liking she might prefer a hotel. Make it clear that if she wants a relationship with you both, including any future children, she needs to be polite. Gentle hug, it's not you. XX Thank you for the kind words. Your Dial and son are very lucky. I'm sorry to hear that you had a vile MIL. I hope you found healing. I will pluck up the courage to call call her out next time she makes a rude comment as it may be better in the long run than to let it fester. MIL says I'm toxic but they're the ones making life hell. My husband, 25M, and I, 25F, have been together for about 5 years. Long story short, we lived at our own parents' houses, then I moved in with his family, then we both moved into his parents' old house out in the country. Ever since we moved out here, we've been struggling with everything. We moved after the pandemic because his mother forced us saying, y'all need y'all's own space. We try to manage working, pets, bills, food, but it's difficult considering we didn't get paid much. After a lot of trouble with mental health, a few hospital stays, and building up strength, we started working at Myel's place of business. I'm an intern and husband just helps with tech support. The boss, husband's grandma, told me that my check would be cut in half. 
Half would be my pay and half would be tuition. That was about two months ago. My pay didn't get cut until about a week ago, but it wasn't cut, it was capped. The boss said no matter how many hours I work, my cap is $80 a week. She also said our maximum to come in is three days a week because she can't afford to pay us. All of this is boiling over because we cannot afford anything. His parents pay our utilities, we're using their car, someone totaled ours a month ago, they offer to pay everything. But why? Because they refuse to pay us our fair share and be understanding people in a comfortable environment. I haven't gone in at all since Monday because I have horrible anxiety and doctor's apps made it impossible. Yesterday, I had a horrible panic attack in the business parking lot and MIL got upset because we embarrassed her and it ruined her day. My husband was in tears because of his own mental health and all she could say was we need to break up because we're not getting help and we're not trying. She kept getting upset because of how mad made her look not because her son was having a crisis. Her exact words to him about me were, I'm sorry her family hates her but there's plenty of resources out there she can use. I've spent the entire time we've been together trying to get help but I can either never afford it or I'm not in the right county slash city. Now I can't afford anything because I make $80 a week. That doesn't even cover gas for the week. My insurance turned because my aunt was helping me pay it but she just stopped out of the blue. I was paying my half and then just got the shock when I tried to go to physical therapy. MIL is ruining our lives but we can't do anything about it because we live in their house and they make us use everything of theirs. We can't even begin to branch out on our own because we don't have the money because they won't pay us what we're owed. I just want to be as far away from her as possible but that means giving up my dream job and passion and income. So your ILs are covering your rent, utilities, and giving you a car. Are they forcing you to work at their business? They're ruining your lives because grandma can't afford to pay you more. Am I missing something here? If you're anywhere in the US, you need to call your State Department of Labor immediately. These people want you to work for nothing. That is not legal. Has she been paying you at least minimum wage? If not, she's breaking the law. They're trying to break you mentally, financially, and physically, OP. Do you have any family that could take you in? This, absolutely this. If in the US this is highly illegal. Get a job somewhere else for starters and then get yourselves out of the rest of it ASAP. That's what's so hard and disappointing. This business is part of an industry I've always wanted to be in. I've tried to get my license for seven years but there's always something in the way. I only have two months left and I don't want to leave and lose my chance. But if I don't leave, she'll make life hell. It's a lose-lose for me. Get a second job. One that has nothing to do with your in-laws. Find new real employment with a real contract to zover you legally and get a smaller more livable and affordable place to live. They are making you dependent on them so you can't leave. If you and husband left and got proper jobs you'd be able to live normal lives away from them and that's the last thing they want. IT jobs are especially easy to get most or even work from home these days and I bet you they don't pay him anywhere near what his skills would get him somewhere else. If there's anyone else you could stay with outside of in-laws I'd do it even if it meant moving far away and starting again because let's face it with a family like that you'll want to move far away soon enough might as well do it sooner rather than later. The longer you leave it the harder it will be to leave. In Texas you have to be paid federal minimum wage at minimum for internship. The employer must also pay payroll, SS and all other taxes. They are not to be paid tuition as that is the reason you get minimum wage. 
If this does not afford you to live then get a second part-time job for the two months remaining. Go to the health insurance marketplace and sign up for medical insurance. It is based on your income so more than likely you won't have to pay anything. My single daughter with no children applied and only had to pay $10 per month even though she was paid more than you. Every county has income-based mental health counseling centers. If you can't find it call your mental health recovery board. If you're having problems paying for food, find a local food bank. If you need more money get another part-time job. The only one who can change your situation is you. If you choose not to change things and just sit back and accept them the way they are, the only one to blame is you. There are a lot of jobs out there right now. As adults sometimes we have to put our dreams on hold in order to survive. Your in-laws have given you a place to live, provided you with a bit of income, are paying your utilities and giving you a car to use. What more do you want from them? In life you have to help yourself and having extra family to help you is a bonus for you. I'm not saying they are wonderful supporting people but they are helping. Look at your situation if you weren't getting their help. Please don't take this as me judging you or looking down on you. It just seems to me that you guys are young and inexperienced at supporting yourselves. True story, I gave my own daughter four months to move out at the age of 25. Why? She was relying on me to do everything and support her. She didn't have the confidence that she could do it on her own. I helped her budget, find an apartment and set everything up. Today she's a confident, self-supporting woman who has traveled all over the world on her own. Parents sometimes need to kick the bird from the nest for them to fly. Learn to make money online. Medical billing or something tangible. It won't pay amazing but you can hide that income from them. Save up, then move away. Leave for a better state and cut them off. Make friends. See if you can crash on their couch or basement for a little. But, honestly. Stop making excuses. You can go to a homeless shelter if it was as bad as you make it seem. Go to social services. Leave Texas for a different state with easier benefits. Never fall for being manipulated like this ever again. If you, you and or your husband have gained any useful skills at your current job, pad the hell out of your resume and use it to look for a full-time job elsewhere that can leverage those skills. But as others have mentioned, at least in the meantime, get a part-time job. You and your husband depend on them for too many things that any kind of boundaries will be impossible. I know this suggestion doesn't work for everyone, but it helped me get out of a situation where I was spending more on gas than I was making at my minimum wage job and saddled with about $30,000 in loan debt. I started doing work that offered on-site accommodations. When I was younger, I'd spent a few summers as a camp counselor, so I went after jobs that were similar, outdoor education centers, etc. But there are jobs in tourism, construction, home care aid, residential center, AmeriCorps, state-slash-national parks, property manager, etc. Google brings up a lot more results. Some jobs favor married couples, some prefer single people, but it never hurts to apply. Living at your job site comes with its own challenges, but I gave up my car for about 3.5 years and ate the free food some jobs gave me. I still had fun, maybe $30 at the bar a few times a month or camping trips with co-workers or a day walking around the city. I always had co-workers with cars, so I could get out to the grocery or the doctor when needed. Very inexpensive leisure. Those jobs tend to pay less since they were housing and feeding me. I made something like $12,000 to $17,000 per year during that part of my life, 
but because I had basically zero living expenses, I was able to keep about $500 in emergency funds and then dump 90% of my paycheck into my loans and get them paid off and start my savings before I transitioned into a more typical 9 to 5 job. Again, I know not everyone is able to pack up and move to a job like that. It's usually not a glamorous lifestyle and takes some adjustment in your daily habits, though now I frequently miss the simplicity of that lifestyle. But it is a tool that worked for me and one that I don't often see discussed. I would say now look at winter jobs since ski resorts and holiday travel will be starting soon. If you're not interested in spending a winter far away, I'm sure Texas has tons of tourism and parks jobs. I'm less familiar with the trades, but I'd imagine if you're more interested in that route, there are probably oil rig job sites in Texas. I think every job I had offered some level of pickup support. Like I would get myself to a nearby airport or train station and someone from the job would pick me up from there and take me to the job site. They understood some folks don't have cars. But that was just a nice gesture and not an official, benefit, so you'd have to talk that through with them. Sounds like you have a dream job you want to pursue, but stepping away from that for a few years might set you up to return to it with more financial stability, and in all honesty, financial stability will probably alleviate some of the mental health stressors, not to mention getting away from toxic people. Best of luck in finding your next step. We're all rooting for you all. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.